Hello and welcome to the Oxford Matt live stream. My name's James and today we're going to be doing trigonometry. Um, great to have you with us. I thought I'd start with some mathematics, um, which is how we start this show. Um, I'm going to combine two trigonometry facts together, or perhaps I'm going to set that as an exercise for you. There's this formula for the area of a triangle, you see. Uh, maybe I should draw a triangle to start off with. Uh, let's draw my triangle. I want the corners to be A, B and C. Uh, and then the normal way to name the sides is to call this one A, this one B and this one C. Uh, and then maybe call the angles something like alpha, beta and gamma. Right, that seems like enough names. There's this formula for the area of the triangle that's one half A, B sine gamma. Okay, you can actually pick um, any corner you like and make a version of that fact to get uh, an e equation for the uh, area of the triangle, um, but that's that's one formula. Okay, um, there's this other fact we know about triangles, that is the cosine rule. The cosine rule gives you some relationship between the cosine of an angle and the side lengths of the triangle, so maybe we could write down something like c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos gamma. Okay, so that's, a, that's another fact um, that you learn at A level or equivalent, or maybe even at GCSE or equivalent, um, to write down something about the cosine of the angle. Uh, you separately know this fact that sine squared gamma plus cosine squared gamma equals 1. Um, here's why I've put these three facts on the board. Um, you can combine these together to get a formula for the area just in terms of A, B, and C, uh, which is just a fantastic thing to be able to do, I suppose. Um, you would start, I suppose, start with this formula for the area of the triangle uh, and try and eliminate sine gamma using this fact about cos gamma. So we know cos gamma in terms of the side lengths, and we can use that to find sine gamma in terms of the side lengths by plugging that horrible mess into here and rearrange everything. Um, and then plug all that in for sine, sine gamma, um, which is absolutely amazing. The whole thing simplifies down quite nicely um, to give you some really incredible formula for the area of a triangle, which I believe is one quarter square root of a plus b plus c uh, minus a plus b plus c a minus b plus c, a plus b minus c, all square rooted like that. Um, that's called Heron's formula. Um, okay, right, I thought I'd start with a bit of maths, just because uh, people tend to watch the first minute of the live stream according to the YouTube stats. How's everyone doing? How are you? Um, lovely to see people in chat. Hello, hi Mew, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, Payan says that there's something called Stewart's Theorem, which I haven't heard of, which is an extension of the Gaussian Rule. Hi to people. Hi to Molly, who's back again. Uh, wasn't here last week. Um, somebody's from Germany. Maya's from Germany, who can finally watch the streams live again. It's nice that people are joining us. Maybe you were here for the last week. Maybe um, this is your first time watching Matt live stream. Great to have you either way. Um, Emmanuel says it's their favourite time, first time watching, although they've been seeing the Maths Club as well. Zach saw Heron's Formula coming. Uh, Raphael's here, um, Nikita Mazepin from Formula One, great to have you with us. Um, these people joining chat are joining on slido.com slash matlive, um, which we're using because you can be anonymous or set your um, set your username to anything you want to within reason. Yeah, people got A-level results this week, um, so congratulations if you got your A-level results or some of your A-level <laughs> A level results. Um, Archie's here for the first time, hi Archie. Uh, right, I'm really behind on my hellos. Hi Rilo, hi... Uh, and here, hey, anonymous people, another advantage of Slido is you can be anonymous. Um, someone says, first time watching from Unique. Hi, if you're watching from Unique, if you're on the Unique Summer School, great to have you here. <laughs> um, you've already seen some stuff through Unique Summer School, you're going to see some more stuff here. Um, uh, if you're from Unique as well, uh, you get access to an interactive version of the worksheets. That's just on the Unique page somewhere. If you go back to the Maths or Computer Science page, then there is now an interactive version of the worksheets too. Uh, yeah, does this triangle inequality? Hello. Oh, hi from Unique, says someone else as well. Haha, -ha, a couple of people have filtered through from Unique. Good to have you with us. Um, yeah, uh, people saying last week was good. Right, cool. Nice to see you, chat. Um, do people have ah, people joining after oh, 
seeing us not live now live what is unique unique was just a summer school that we, we run uniq um you can find out more uh it's for uk students because we're a uk university but it's just one thing anyway right okay oh, unique squad right okay good 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 okay um so I was pointed out a really interesting thing, which is I've got a big square root. The thing inside, I should probably make sure that's positive if I'm going to do the big square root of it. Um, and luckily it is positive for any triangle that's actually a triangle. Um, there are these minus signs in here, but any triangle you draw always has these three things all, or are all positive. So each, each term in round brackets is, is positive inside here. Um, that's true because of something called the triangle inequality, which I've put on the worksheet somewhere, uh, which we're going to mention. Okay. Uh, <laughs> someone asks, will following these <laughs> give us good chances of getting good marks on the mat? I mean, it's called a mat live stream. It's information about the mats. Um, part of the idea is it helps you get better at problem solving that might be helpful for the mat. Right, cool. Uh, Nestle's here. Hi, Nestle from emails. Um, hello, Tommy. Yes. Oh, it's nice recognising those from Maths Club as well, which is good. Right, okay. Looking forward to this. Right, let's start with the um, how do you feel poll. Um, if you are here last week, you'd have seen this poll of a how do you feel about a topic. Um, please rate how do you feel about trigonometry, which means sine and cosine stuff like this. Um, five stars would be, I love this stuff, it's amazing. I, I can always do a, a good sine and cosine question. Um, four stars would be, I'm not quite that confident. Uh, one star would be, I don't know what sine and cosine, and I don't like doing these questions at all. Um, get right. Okay. Um, well, I suppose, um, okay, so it's settling down a little bit. People are voting over there. So far, at the moment, we're slightly more confident on this than we were on sequences and series last week. Uh, I think the sequences and series settled out about 3.9. Looks like we're averaging 4.1. There's some law of large numbers happening now that more people are voting, but the average is not changing quite so much. Uh, yeah, so someone says in chat, can't see chat on the stream, so I'll read it out. Um, some they forgot the the graphs for arc sine and arc cos, um, which are the, the those are the inverse functions for sine and cosine. They're not on the mat syllabus. I'm not going to talk about them today. Um, doing graphs of arc sine and arc cos, um, not on the mat syllabus, but. Interesting things to try and work out. What does the inverse function look like? If you know what sine looks like, what does inverse sine look like as a graph? Um, interesting thing to learn about further maths. Oh, somebody asked a moment ago, do we learn about Heron's formula on further maths? And I think you don't. I think the thing I just showed you at the start is not on maths or further maths. It's just one of those facts. Um, there is some nice formula for the area of a triangle just in terms of its side lengths. Um, ah, multiple solutions, annoying multiple solutions. Can you access a complete math syllabus? Says B behind behind here. Um, yes, uh, you should be able to find one on the Matt website. Um, so if you, I think I've put Matt website in the sidebar on Slido, and there's a link uh, somewhere. <laughs> um, there's just a one-page syllabus on the Matt website somewhere. Uh, it's not very long. Ah, yeah, it says that they're good. Uh, there's a question behind here. If you make James laugh, can you go? Can you go to Oxford and? Lots of people make me laugh. So <laughs> I'm laughing at that as well. Right, okay. Uh, thank you for your votes. That's very interesting to me. Uh, we, we, ended, we did end up at 4.1 on, on trigonometry, which I'm encouraged by. Okay. And good score. Good score on the mat is about 70, 75 would be good. There are average, average numbers on the mat website. Let's put a link to where all of this is. So my short URL for this is www.maths because that's the subject we're interested in, .ox.ac.uk um, slash r slash m-a-t. Um, that's my website where I've got information about the maths admissions test, including the syllabus, past paper questions, average scores that people got, things like that. Okay, is this better than doing past papers? We're going to do some past papers as part of this. The last three sessions are going to be doing past papers. You can do other past papers if you want to. Um, I've, I've left all the, all the past papers 2012 and before I'm not using on the live stream, so if you want to do more past papers, up to you. Uh, too many formulas. Yeah, trigonometry. I didn't say no. Maybe I should have said no. What is the math? Nah, it's just it's just some maths test. It's a maths test that we use for admissions. That's what it stands for. It stands for a maths admissions test. But today we're just going to talk about maths. Uh, uh, yeah, people asking about, uh, can you still get an interview? Yes, but uh, better the math score, the better. Uh, someone's asked my favourite question, which I've seen before. Um, are the average numbers percents or scores? The mat's out of 100, so both. Um, oh, 
So let's put attachments. What's this? Oh, that's the worksheet as a PDF. Thank you, SV. Uh, that's a good order. Right, okay. I think I'm going to do Matt questions, questions about Matt at the end at about six o'clock and they're kind of just chatting bit at the end so that we can get on with some trigonometry. Uh, if you want to talk about even and odd functions, well, there's a little smiley face, which I think is supposed to make me laugh. Right, cool. Um, I don't know about imperial and emissions. You should talk to imperial and for imperial and emissions. Uh, and Riser would like videos for question six and seven. We've got a session on recursion coming up uh, in a few weeks um, that's supposed to be for computer science. Computer science knowledge in particular, but question six and seven, a little bit, little bit different. Okay, reading recommendations are in our departmental prospectus, Rosie. Um, if you search for maths department Oxford prospectus, uh, then you should get a prospectus page that's got some reading suggestions in it. If you want that, right? Okay, uh, can I? I can't suggest anything using the fast Fourier transform. I'm going to do some trigonometry. Right? Okay, we're going to look at the maths syllabus together. Let's go. Um, here's the maths syllabus. Uh, we've got definition of tan, uh, solving simple equations, looking out for multiple solutions, sine squared plus cos squared, and some relationship between sine and cosine. Um, okay. Uh, in the revision bit, I've tried to spell out what sine, cosine, and tan are, which I think you learned about GCSE in the UK, but hey, I've got to put it in the revision section. Um, knowing what tan is, uh, some sort of Pythagoras facts. Um, these functions are periodic. They've got some nice symmetries going on that sine and cosine, um, sine and cosine are related with that 90 degree minus, uh, 90 degree minus theta fact. This is pretty good. So we just kind of relate sine and cosine together. Um, and sine and cosine themselves have this kind of translational symmetry. Um, and tan has a symmetry as well. It's kind of translation symmetry. Um, sine is also an example of an odd function. Uh, an odd function is one where when you put minus x into the function, you get minus the value of x. So its values for negative numbers are the opposite of its numbers for positive inputs. Uh, cosine is an, is an example of an even function. Uh, if you put a negative number in, you get the same thing as if you put the equivalent positive number in. Right, okay, good. Uh, Miro is brilliant, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, so then I've got some more revision stuff on this triangle with different different size corners. Oh, people have got more facts about tan and cot. Oh yeah, and rotational symmetry. Oh, okay, people are telling me about all functions in chat. Yeah, um, we're using degrees because and not radians because we don't know for sure that everybody's learnt about radians um, when they sit the mat the maths emissions test. Um, so. Uh, we, we ask all the questions in degrees. You're allowed to use radians when you do the questions, if you want to. The people marking the test know about radians. Which is, we, we use degrees in all the stuff that we set in the questions these days. Um, the zero function is odd and even. Weird that, isn't it? Uh, portion of the math cover, yeah. So question six and seven are a bit different. Yeah, there was some... Okay, so there was a question about automata, but you didn't really need to know about automata theory beforehand. The questions six and seven are sometimes like that, but they bring in new maths. They tend to bring in new maths. The other questions can do that too, but six and seven especially uh, tend to define, some, define something new and get you to play with it. Okay, a little bit more revision. Oh, that's an awkward page break, isn't it? I have the picture of a triangle and then oh, I've got my facts about the triangles over here. Um, uh, so the I've got that fact about the area. I love this fact, it's really good. Um, let's not forget as well, that if you know the height of the triangle, there's this formula you learn at some point. Uh, if you know the base of the triangle and you know the height of the triangle, where that's a perpendicular height, um, then the area is half base height. Let's not forget that one. You know, if it's a right angle triangle, then you just multiply the sides together and divide by two. Um, you don't always have to use the biggest the biggest formula you know. Um, sometimes it's okay to use simpler formulas in simpl simpler cases. People love radians in chat. People always love radians in chat. I get it. You love radians. They're in GCSE further maths or something. Not everyone does GCSE further maths. Um, okay. Um, and do we need, need to know exact trig values? You're expected to know them for particularly nice triangles, which is coming up in the warm up in a second. Um, sine rule and cosine rule um, are other facts that you learn at A level that we can use. Um, they relate the 
uh, angles of the triangle together. They have this relationship between the sides of a triangle and the cosine of the angle. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's this shoelace formula Ali's mentioned in chat. It's a really complicated formula for if you know the coordinates of all three corners of the triangle, you can work out the area of the triangle from that. I mean, if you know coordinates of all three corners of the triangle, uh, what am I going to call these? X, Y, Z, W, P, Q or something. Then there's some absolutely horrible formula to work out the area of that triangle. The thing I would do is rather than learning that formula, there's some method that people learn with called the shoelace method. Um, rather than learning that, I'd probably work out some angles or even work out Heron's formula and throw Heron's formula at it. It's quite a hard calculation to do, but you know, it's there as a thing. Radians are in P3 maths. Yeah, so we don't know if people who've done P3 maths in their first year or not. Depends whether they're learning maths and maths in parallel or series. Right, okay. People in chat really love radians. Um, concept I mentioned was automata. An, an automata is a kind of computer program. Uh, it follows rules based on different states. Uh, it's one particular past question. Um, okay, how much Euclidean geometry? Here we go. How much Euclidean geometry are you expected to know for Matt? And the answer is the stuff that we just saw. This is it. <laughs> You're not expected to know... Um, any more trigonometry than that. I suppose there's some geometry facts. Ah, right, so there's some basic geometry facts coming up next week. Um, in next week's live stream, we're going to talk some, talk some geometry, uh, some sort of basic facts about circles. And there's a very, there's a little bit coming up. If you want a sneak preview, the worksheet is on the website down there. And the, uh, yeah, the mat syllabus is in the place where the mat syllabus is. Right, you could just find its height and width. That's a little bit tricky for this triangle. So if, if y is equal to w, then that's kind of lined up with the axes. So maybe that would be a nice way to find the base. And then maybe I'd think about the height. Um, if all of those are random numbers, then it's surprisingly tricky to write down a formula for what the area of the triangle is. You know, points are everywhere. I'm not going to do it now. Um, uh, yeah, Rilo's got... Uh, yeah, okay. Good. Uh... <laughs> Is this, is this just OOMC, but with a different colour scheme? What's going on? Um, can't get away with it, surely. Um, right. Do you need to know a lot of trig values? I think it's time to look at the warm-up problems. Um, let's go. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, people want to use... Ooh. So graph theory and the complex plane have just been mentioned in chat. There's two ideas, and you, you don't need to know about graph theory or the complex plane in order to, to do math questions. So... Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard finding. It's it's surprisingly hard finding the width of the triangle. Right. Okay. Good. Um, I tried to write down for this warm-up question all of the values between naught and three hundred and sixty. Um, all of the values where you could work out sine, cosine, and tan just by drawing little triangles or just by knowing the values at different points. Um, it's sort of, once you've got up to 180 degrees, after that, things repeat a bit. Well, tan actually repeats. The values for tan over in the second half are just the same as the values for tan in the first half. Um, sine looks like this, up and then around from 180 degrees. So once we've found the values of sine from 0 to 180 degrees, we can just you know, write down the second bit by having minus signs in front. And cosine does something similar. It goes down from one to minus one and then it goes up from minus one to one. So we'll just write the values backwards for the second half of this question. So there's lots of angles that I can think of between naught and 360 degrees where you can um, work, out, <laughs> work out the values, but actually you'll need to work out the first few. And in fact, because sine repeats in here, you could just work out this bit of sine, this first uh, quarter of the range, and then write some values in backwards. I think I've spaced things out nicely. Uh, is it possible to get into, somebody asks in chat, uh, is it possible to get into Oxford with grades U, U, U? And that would not meet our standard conditional offer. We do like people to do well in their A-levels or equivalent. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, people know other facts. Yeah, Nikita Mazbin says that uh, sine 45 is equal to sine 135. 
which on this graph is some, something like uh, here and here. These ones are the same. And then sine 315 is going to be like the negative, negative of whatever that is. I think sine 45 is root 2 over 2. Maybe I'll fill that one in. Um, I've got a table in the solutions doc, which is going out. Uh, people want my step score again. Um, do we still do EE offers? No, we don't do we don't do easy offers. Sorry, we want people to stay in school and get their get their grades. Um, do, 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 theory. Do, 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 do. O O M C. Molly's got it. It's fewer characters in a personal statement. It's almost oh. anyway. Um, right, good. Um, four A star at A level, but also B at AS level. Fine with fine with me. Um, put the timestamp in your personal statement. Fine with me. Uh, or take screenshots now. Four A stars. Yeah, three A stars. Well, sorry, two A stars and one A is what Matt is looking for. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Um, <laughs> our addition and subtraction rules. Um, but we're not going to use those on maths because they're not on the syllabus. So some people can work out things like sine 75 using some sort of later bit of A-level maths or further maths, but that's not on maths, so not today. Cool, right. I reckon this, this exercise is okay, but boring uh, to actually work out these values. And, you know, you draw two triangles and you're done, right? You draw this 60-degree th triangle and you draw this 45-degree triangle not bad, not bad. 45 degree triangle and then you're done. And you use the symmetries of the functions to fill in the rest of them. I'm not going to do all of that now. Um, I've put in a couple of questions about finding uh, sine x equals one half. So working out where does sine x uh, take the value one half. Uh, so thinking carefully about which values, how many solutions you might get. Uh, and also tan. So think about solutions of simple um, equations. Um, I should say, I normally don't get time to go through all of the questions. Um, I'm kind of expecting people to try the questions themselves, either before the live stream or at some point afterwards, once I'm going to use some hints. What's the easiest part of maths? Uh, probably the bit where you write your candidate name on the front, or maybe question one is supposed to be, question 1A is supposed to be, uh, okay, start to the exam. Yeah, symmetry. Ah, uh, your name optional says that they know, yeah, they know some... They know some values, and I think that's enough knowledge. Okay, big scary table of table of values, but I think that's enough enough facts. And combined with your knowledge of tan and tan is sine over cosine and sine over cosine, yes, and then other other facts about symmetries, you can piece together facts. Um, maybe I quite like this um, quite like this question just as a warm up. Okay, I'm going to stop answering A level questions for a little bit because I am getting behind schedule, but I'm going to come back to them. In general, A levels are one bit of the picture. Having A levels that meet our standard conditional offer is good, but otherwise, uh, otherwise you don't need to over you don't need to overachieve overachieve on A levels. Um, okay. Uh, why aren't we using a calculator? Why aren't we allowed to use a calculator? It's, most of the questions don't get easier when you use a calculator, to be honest. Um, but some of them become very easy when you use a calculator. Um, so we like uh, we like asking questions where you can work things out where you didn't need to use a calculator. Sometimes they're really nice calculators. It's really nice questions. Anyway, right, cool. Um, this pair of questions I just want to highlight. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to write about them. But um, when you're solving something like this, tan 45x equals 1, it's really tempting to write something like, well, I want solutions inside this range. I want 45 degrees or 225 degrees inside this range. Um, but that's 45x, so I should divide by 45 to get 1 degree or 5 degrees. Um, it's really tempting to restrict the range too early and then do some maths on the function inside the brackets, maybe, um, through your maths, and then actually you end up missing solutions um, because there are other numbers outside this range that, when you divide by 45, end up with a final answer for x inside this range, I guess. Um, I've seen it catch people up quite a bit before that having x in this range um, doesn't mean that 45x is in this range, which sounds silly when I say that loud, but um, it's it's a mistake you can make. Um, oh, stream's not working for one person, um, which is a shame. 
do, 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 do. yeah, inverse trig, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. yep, other inequalities are available. Good, okay. Um, and I've got some simplifying simplifying questions again, including a cheeky uh, geometric series in here as well. Um, Matt has lots of links between different bits of mathematics, different bits of the syllabus. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to have something from last week, geometric series, combined with trigonometry uh, like this. So here's a, here's a sum where you need to spot that it's a geometric series um, so that you could do the sum and then do some trigonometry. So mashing together different bits of the syllabus um, in ways you might not have seen before um, it's something we like to do on map. Yeah, people have got uh, really good solutions. Uh, and I'm going to release the answers on Friday so that you can check your answers if you want to, um, so you can get closure on questions. Um, yeah, that sort, of, that sort of thing. Um, some people really like to check their answers. Sometimes I put more commentary into the solutions. If I think of stuff that I forgot to say live, because I was talking about A-levels, then I put extra commentary into the thing that I put on the website. Right, cool. Um, writing stuff in terms of sine, we have to do a little bit to sort of use sine squared plus cos squared to rearrange things. Um, simplifying things about uh, trig trigonometry with the symmetry functions. Put some practice in there as well. Yep, sine squared plus cos squared, all squared. Came up somewhere up here, there it is. Uh, cheeky multiplied out sine squared plus cos squared. Um, so this thing is just equal to one because it's just sine squared plus cos squared, all squared. Um, down here, I've got some uh, warm-up exercise that I don't want to do live, but if the sine rule, cosine rule, or the formula for finding the area of a triangle, if those were scary for you, um, or if you're not really familiar with what those things are, then have a look at the formulas earlier on in the revision, um, and have a go at this question. So given this triangle, I've given you, I think, enough facts about the triangle uh, so A, B, C, and I've told you that A, B is length 3, and B, C is length 2, and this is 120 degrees. I think that uniquely defines the triangle, because I've given you those two sides and an angle, side, angle, side. Um, I think that uniquely determines the triangle. I'd like to know everything else about the triangle. I'd like to know facts about the angles, I'd like to know the, the other side length, I'd like to know the area of the triangle. Can you work out everything about this triangle. Um, that's kind of the point of this exercise. It's not very fun to do the calculations, I'm not going to do it live with you now, um, but that's the idea of this warm-up question. Just once you've been told something like side angle side, then you should know loads of stuff about the triangle. You should be able to work out anything you want to work out about that triangle. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You don't get given any formulas in math. Um, Oh, substituting ranges. Yeah, so people have been talking about that range question a bit uh, to substitute ranges in to say, oh, if, if x is between this, then 0 is less than or equal to 45x is less than whatever this is. Some huge amount up up, up, the, up the top here. Um, so maybe think of it like that. There are different ranges on these things. Uh, da, 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 da. Are you allowed to state that sine a minus b? Um, you can use it if you know it. Um, for this warm-up, so I guess this is a warm-up fact only, uh, warm-up, warm-up only. For this warm-up, I thought, yeah, for this warm-up, I thought, this question I've asked is really easy if you know the fact sine a minus b. I want you to warm-up, so I want you to do something, so maybe prove this, maybe prove this fact or something. Um, I'm not expecting most people to have seen sine a minus b. Um, it's something you learn at some point during A-level maths or further maths. Um, you don't need it for math. Um, so I kind of I wanted to ask about this combination of things because it's quite fun working them all out, but I didn't want people to shortcut and just write down, you know, oh, I know this big powerful thing that lets you do the question. Um, actual math questions are normally written more carefully to tell you what you can and can't use. This was a bit clumsy. I'm gonna write clumsy. I'm commenting on my own question writing here. Um, so a bit clumsy question writing, but I want you to do it, you know, I want you to do it properly, working with each term. Um, okay. Um, if a theorem is not on the syllabus, do you need to prove it before using it? Um, I think no. Um, if you if you quote if you quote something clearly, if you say I'm using sine a minus b, if you're doing an explanation, then uh, go for it. I think. If it if it makes the if it's a really powerful theorem that's quite obscure and it makes the question 
trivial, then congratulations, you've discovered the thing that the question's asking about, and it's going to be quite hard to give you marks for just quoting the thing, the thing that it's about. But the question's probably written to ban that. There was a past step question once. Step's a different exam. Um, we can use the cosine rule here. A past step question that was a special case of Fermat's last theorem, a big, powerful maths theorem. Um, it was a very special case for the step question. Um, and the question was very carefully written so that you couldn't just say, Fermat's last theorem is true. This question's easy. You couldn't use Fermat's last theorem to do it. It was written very carefully. Uh, we do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> um, Git. Uh, I'm doing an engineering course for a gap year. I'm going to answer this one. It's going to appear on screen. Um, I'll answer this one at the end. I'm going to come back and give you a proper reply. I'm going to do this bit first. Okay. Um, just for fun in the warm up, I've put um, two different proofs for you to work out. Um, the first bit here, you can work out a proof of one of the rules on the syllabus um, in terms of one of the other facts on the syllabus. I quite like this. So this is different statements for the area and then you do some manipulations on it and it turns out to be uh, a, a fact that you, you know. Um, so these facts are kind of linked together somehow, they're related. Um, and then down here we've got this triangle inequality. Um, so if you've got a triangle Ah, I suppose it could be, it could be, it could have some sides the same, couldn't it? So it could have, it could have all three sides the same. Maybe I should have put less than or equal to in here. Bother. Okay. So given a triangle, you must have each side being less than the sum of the other two sides. Um, so whenever you've got a triangle ABC uh, with side lengths A, B and C, you can't hear, but I'm saying capital letters for the corners and lowercase letters for the sides. Um, whenever you've got a triangle like this, you always have A less than B plus C, B less than A plus C, and C less than A plus B. Um, in words, this just means that the distance between these two points is a shorter distance to go in a straight line rather than going via C and B. Um, so this, this side length is shorter than going via the other two side lengths. Shortest distance is a straight line. Uh, Fermat's last theorem is proved. It's done. Andrew Wiles completed it, mate. Um, ooh, there's a high math score question, which I'm going to do at the end as well. Um, you can prove... Oh, I love this stream. This is great. You can prove the triangle inequality using complex numbers. <laughs> Someone in chat. Brilliant. <laughs> sounds, sounds great. Uh, sounds really fun. Um, I'm not going to do it on the stream today. Uh, does Oxford care about GCSEs? I'll take it the take at the end as well. Um, inequality based on altitudes. Oh, version of this. Oh, okay. Other stuff going on. Yep. Okay. Gets really tricky when the cosine is negative. Mm, I think it depends whether my proof here. I think it depends whether sine is positive or negative. But I can sort of see what you mean. Okay. Um, so you can work out a little proof of this from what you know about cosine being between minus one and one um, and the cosine rule. Cool, okay. But hopefully this will just sort of make sense that this is just a fact about triangles that if you go along this side it's shorter than going via the other two sides. Whichever one you pick. Right, okay. Um, I think we're warmed up. <laughs> We've talked about cosine rule, sine rule, all these things um, doing more than one at once. It's complicated. Um, a question about chat SV would like to talk about degenerate triangles. So a degenerate triangle I think is one where A is equal to B plus C because the third point is somewhere else, somewhere on the first side. Um, like three points in a row. Um, like that. I think that's not a triangle but I can see how calling it a degenerate triangle might be useful for some applications. Um, in that case you need to put some or equal signs. You put more or equal signs into the triangle inequality to say, oh, A could be equal to B plus C. Um, okay, right, good. Um, how would I prepare for the mat? Well, I'd look at some past mat questions, maybe some warm up questions to get in the mood to do the mat questions. Um, but then I would look at past mat questions and try and solve them. And I get stuck on them and I would try and get unstuck on them. Um, oh, here's a mat question right now. Um, this is 2017 question 1B, so near the start of the paper. Um, which is a nice place to start if you're looking at questions. Um, in the actual mat, it'd be worth 
four marks. <laughs> four marks for getting the right answer, no marks for getting the wrong answer. Um, so choose wisely. Um, I've switched on a poll for people to vote for uh, what they what they want. Uh, no penalties for being wrong, no prizes for being right. Um, last week, chat was incredibly good at all of the Mac questions. So I'm going to try and find a question that chat's less good at. I'm going to try and find a more controversial one at some point. Here's the question. I'll read it out. Um, we'll ask for the minimum value achieved by this function. It is, oh my word, it's called f of x. It's 9 times cosine to the 4, 4x four minus 12 cosine squared x plus 7. This notation's a bit annoying, isn't it? So it means... 9 times cosine x to the 4 minus 12 cosine x squared plus 7, like that. But we put the, we put the 4 and the 2 inside. That's, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, Molly's just proved the sine rule, so that's good. Um, should we aim to complete all the warm-up questions and actual questions, or just pause if we're not finished? Or just stay live. I'd stay live to be honest. We're just going to chat about Mac questions. You can come back to the warm up later. <laughs> um, and some of them, some of them are less important than others. Um, like that proof question at the end, I put in because I thought it was nice. Is it actually warm up? I don't know. Uh, some of them I just want to put in because they're fun. Uh, do I have any favourite textbooks? Oh, I'll try and think, and I'll come back at the end to talk about books. Um, oh my word, Zach's got like a complex number, oh my word, okay, <laughs> complex number shoelace thing. See, chat now is now combining together, you can't see because it's behind, but chats are combining together um, different things from earlier. Right, okay. Um, ooh. Uh, Grant Sanderson's here again, or somebody with the username Grant Sanderson is here, um, so that's nice. Um, Uh, um, good. Okay, so people are having a go. Um, when I look at a question like this, um, really I think I'm sort of using the maths parts of my brain to imagine you know, doing some maths operations to things. Um, but there's something almost creative about trying to guess methods I could use to simplify this or to make this easier. It's almost like the, I guess, the bit of your brain that does recognition or does spotting Oh, I've seen something like this before. I've been in a situation like this before. I'm not really sure if that's the same bit of my brain that does maths or not, but hey, um, when I look at this, I guess I'm seeing something like a polynomial or something. It's the powers, right? The powers and the way the powers are written in that order. I mean, it would be the same if they were written in a different order, but I think it's because the powers are written in that order, it's making me think of polynomials. Um, you know, if it said 9x to the 4 minus 12x squared plus 7, then I'm off to the races because you know, I know loads of stuff about finding minimum values achieved by polynomials. Um, it's got some cosines in, so I'm going to be a bit careful. Could you put values in? Now, you could put some values in. I'd be a bit stressed putting values in. Um, I'd be stressed because I, I'd be worried about missing the minimum value. Like If I just put in 0, if I just put in 0, then I get 9 minus 12 plus 7 which is uh, four. Okay, so I've put in a value and I've got four. Um, what does that tell me? Well, I guess it tells me the minimum is four or less. That's quite good, actually. It's quite good to know. Minimum is four or less. Uh, people are getting minus four or four. Ah, okay. Which is what you get when you plug in, uh, plug in zero. Ah, it's, there's some squaring going on, so something's never negative. Um, uh, Rishi wants to su sub in minus one as well, and I suppose you probably mean, what about when cosine x is minus one, or cosine x equals one? Um, so people are kind of thinking about putting in different numbers. Uh, I guess really we're putting in different values of x, the angle, to see what happens. I'm up for that. Let's plug in. Let's plug in 1. Oh, when co cos x is 1, that's the same as when x is 0, effectively. x equals 0 is an example of that, so that's going to be 4. And up here, when, when cos x is minus 1, that's going to be huh, minus 1 to the 4. Oh, that's also 1. 
This is also 1. So this is also f is equal to 4 there as well. Okay. So we've found lots of values where f is 4. It's not always 4, I think. It'd be a bit of a strange function if it was always 4. Maybe, maybe stranger things have happened. Maybe it's always 4. Ah, people in chat. Brilliant. Okay, that's been posted multiple times, so I'm going to approve one of them and not the others. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> Uh, yeah, something in 0 0.9. So what about when cosine is 0 0.9? Um, uh, somebody's picked in chat 0 0.9 as a number to plug in. So, yeah, a bit tricky. Um, and other people are telling me to complete the square. and They're really shouting it behind here. Okay, yeah, good, right, good. Okay, right, let's turn off the poll. So we can see chat on screen again. Okay, good. Chat's telling me to complete the square because chat spotted that this is not quite a quadratic. It's a fourth degree polynomial, but... If I think of cos squared as something like u, then this becomes 9u squared minus 12u plus 7, which, oh my word, that's a quadratic. Love quadratics. <gasps> quadratics are brilliant. And then everybody knows loads of facts about um, completing the square. So you can go and complete the square and, you know, go and work out the minimum value, value of this quadratic. Um, it's 3u minus 2, all squared. And that will be uh, minus, what is that, uh, 4 plus 3. So this has got minimum value 3. Um, small check. Small check. Does it actually take the value 3? So you've got to be a little bit careful. The answer is in fact 3, oh, which chat's got at 58% on 3, 32% on 4. So it's a bit controversial in chat. Um, it does take the value 3. It takes the value 3 when u is equal to 2 thirds. When is u equal 2 thirds? Well, u equals 2 thirds when cos squared x is equal to 2 thirds, which means that cos x is equal to root 2 over 3, which x is equal to something or other, like inverse cos of root 2 over 3. Ah, I don't know what that number is. Um, I probably wouldn't have guessed this value when we were checking values over here and it was coming back as 4. I wouldn't have checked guessing root 2 over 3, right? Um, as one of my cosine values. Weird. Um, but that's the value, if you plug that value in, then when cos x is equal to root 2 over 3, the value comes back as 3. Um, and in fact, that's the minimum of the function. This term in this term that's squared is always positive, so it can't go below 3. Um, uh, yeah, u is always positive. And we've got to be a little bit careful. Um, if this had come back, if this had come back as some other some other function, we really want this term in brackets here to be 0 so that we know that we found that the minimum value of 3. Um, we got a little bit lucky that this function inside here, 3u minus 2, that, that is sometimes 0. There is some value um, that you can plug into cosine to get root 2 over 3. Um, if the numbers were a bit different, uh, then you can get different, different behaviour. Um, if the numbers were a bit different, then maybe we'd complete the square and we get inside here um, a function that could never get down to zero. Um, if it was uh, 2u plus 3 or something, uh, 2u plus 3 instead, I, mean, I know that's not what happens when you complete the square, but if it was 2u plus 3, um, then because u is cos squared and it's positive, this would always be bigger than 3 inside the bracket. The final answer would be bigger than 12. Um, okay, it's not that, but have got to be careful. Um, okay. Uh, could you be more than one to trick us? Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, so that, that, that would be a problem as well. So here, <laughs> yeah, okay. You've got to be really careful when you're doing this kind of minimising thing. Um, what we've done is kind of changed variables. We started with this value x, that could be anything, and then we've changed values to u, changed variable to u. We've got to remember, at some point, maybe when we're checking our answer, we've got to remember that u can only go between 0 and 1. So while we've got this lovely quadratic, I was so excited I drew a box around it, we've only got u between 0 and 1. Um, that's important because minimising that quadratic, we're doing that in some range. 
you can only be between naught and one. Okay, so I got maybe too excited at that point, and I should have drawn a box around this as well. Okay, other numbers could be different things. This question, very forgiving and nice. Okay. Ah, if you plug in cos 30, Ross has got a hot take here. You could have plugged in cos 30, which gives a smaller number than four. Um, and because it's multiple choice, once you know the minimum is less than four, it must be three. Oh, hot take, I like it. Um, cos 30, that's one of the values we know. Cos 30 is uh, whoa, root three over two, right? Or something like that? Or is that right? Yeah, I've gone panicky about my cosine sine values. Okay, good stuff. We learned that just plugging in values, sometimes other things, other things to try, like spotting a spotting a secret quadratic, um, and sometimes plugging in values. According to Ross here, sometimes plugging in values can get you all of the way anyway. Uh, <laughs> it is root three over two. Thank you, Exana. Okay. Oh, cos 45. People are plugging in all sorts of values now. <laughs> Once you know the answer, finding the method, easy. Right. Uh, we don't know if Ross's approach is benefit of hindsight or not. Might be hindsight, might not be. Who knows? Right. We didn't do any differentiation. Really don't want to do any differentiation today. Right, okay. Let's have a look at another one and see if we can use some of the skills that we just, just used. Um, so this is 2016 1D. Uh, I'm going to wait a moment so that we can talk about it in chat before turning on the poll. Uh, I'll read it out first. We'll talk about it. That was a weird question, wasn't it? It turned out to be three. Um, here's a weirder question. Um, we're asked for how many solutions are there? So not what are the solutions, just how many solutions are there for cos the nx plus cos the two nx equal to zero. And we're given some range. Okay. And n is some integer, whole number, um, bigger than or equal to one. Okay, so maybe this is, when n is 1, this reads cos plus cos squared, which I have opinions about. I could probably have a go at that. When n is 37, this is cos to the 37 plus cos to the 74, which I don't have ooh, I don't have intuition about how to make a start with that. Um, so, yeah, okay. Other, other things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, someone says, why are we not considering cosine equals minus root 2 over 3? And you're absolutely right. That was clumsy of me. This this happens also when cosine is minus root two over three. You're right. So more values of x. It take it takes the minimum value at uh, lots of different values of x, four different values of x. Um, okay. Uh, you could try something in ends one and two. Some of the options have got these even and odd n. So I like that Nikita is thinking about plugging in uh, even n and odd n separately. We're trying one and two. The smallest numbers that are bigger than or equal to one. So, you know, starting with those ones. Uh, in fact, when you try um, when you try plugging in two, I think you need to have the idea that you need for the question. So that's good. Um, uh, do I write mat papers on someone? Yes, I write some of the questions on mat, which is good fun. I did not write any of the questions that we're talking about today. Um, oh, polls, not secret. Okay, we'll try a poll that's not secret. Let's see if that works. Um, aha, Rilo wants to do some factorization. Oh, I like that. So when n is one, let's try out some n equals one stuff. I want to see how the vote changes as I do stuff. Okay, right. Um, so when n is one, oh, pink. Let's go for a easier to read color. When n is one, this reads cos plus cos squared x equals zero, which factorizes. Oh, which feels great. Well, now we're solving it because now either cosine x is zero, like that, two solutions, or cosine x is minus one, one solution. So three solutions. Ah, okay. Could do some more factorizing when n is. Yeah, could do more factorizing for larger values of n, right? I quite like this factorizing idea. Sure, when n is two. We've got, I think, cos squared x times 1 plus cos squared x equals 0. This cos squared x, that could be 0 when x is 90 or 270. Um, and 1 plus cos squared, that's never 0. No complex numbers today, please. Um, yeah, people are putting the numbers in chat as well. Thank you, Mamfa. Uh, and people are making a substitution again to turn it into a quadratic. 
People want to complete the square again. Archie wants to complete the square. Go for it, Archie. Yes. Um, factorise it a bit. Yeah. So it feels like the solution is going to be sometimes... Sometimes, maybe when n is odd, we get something inside this bracket that could be 0 if cos x is minus 1. And when n is even, we get something inside this bracket that can never be 0 because it's 1 plus a square. Um, so that feels like the switch between having a different behaviour when n is odd or when n is even. Okay, and people in the chat are doing brilliantly here. Loads of facts about even powers and odd powers. Chat is 98% correct on the poll and everything. Yep, and your reasoning in chat is really good. Um, uh, okay, uh, factorised and worked out. Yep, cool. Even integers. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, in general, let's do the general case just to write it out. Um, in general, this thing we're given um, so either or 1 plus cos to the n x equals 0. Um, this, if n is odd, this is just cos x equals minus 1, which has a solution. But if n is even, then this is never true for any x. Um, cool. OK, so I think this is three solutions where n is odd and two when n is even, which is option D. I agree with chat. Thank you, chat. Um, <laughs> kids, right. Uh, Molly's got a question that's not a dumb question. What effect does the power have on the cos graph? So if you're thinking about graphs, then n, raising it to the power of n, if n is even, so this is cos, if n is even, then that's like squaring things. So n, if n is 2 or 4 or 6, then you end up with something that looks like this. Uh, so that would be like cos to the 2n. Um, if n is odd, then you get something like this. Negative things to an odd power are negative. So it would be a bit like this. Uh, 2n plus 1. Uh, I kind of regret using n in here. So even powers, you're, it's like squaring. Things end up positive. Odd powers, negative numbers stay negative. But crucially, this one is never minus 1, and this one is sometimes minus 1. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, cool. Yeah, B says brain switched off this summer. So, yeah, okay. Eliminating options. Again, people are trying to multiple choice this one. I like it. Okay, right, good. What about non-integer n? Yeah, okay, luckily we're told that n is an integer. Non-integer n, very interesting, does other stuff. Luckily this question only asks about integer n. Um, or complex n, says, hang on, the same person says, what about complex n? Yeah, come on, complex numbers again. Right, uh, Olivia, yes. Yes, this. Good, succinct explanation. Oh, people are putting in chat. Ah, oh, what's going on? Ah, oh, I could have left left chat to just discuss the graphs. Ah, oh, sorry. Right, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, good. Or a matrix or something. Right, okay. <laughs> We're playing name the maths topics on the Matt live stream. Um, okay. This question's a bit more tricky. Uh, we're doing really well so far. Oh, and it's almost 6 o'clock. That was fast. Um, we're given some inequalities, and we're shown some ranges. Hmm... So we're showing some ranges. Uh, points have coordinates cosine x, sine x. It takes me ages to work out that that means that the angle is x. So this is like the coordinates cosine and sine, giving us this angle around. So really we're being asked which of these arcs, the different arcs are different ranges for x. So we're being asked which range of x is this tree. We've got this pair of inequalities. We want tan to be less than cosine, and we want cosine to be less than sine. B wants to get the cast diagram going. I think the cast diagram, the cast diagram is keeping track of which things are positive or negative. It's a good idea here. It really helps um, if you know which things are positive or positive or negative. I can never remember which way round the cast diagram goes, so which is why I haven't put it on the stream so far. Uh, cool, good. Okay. Yes, Maya's got a good description of the previous question as well. Yeah, they're a bit like polar coordinates. Uh, good. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. People want to rule out E. Why do people want to rule out E? 
E contains it sort of contains 270 over here. Uh, tan is really negative, then it's really positive over here. Just just beyond 270. So I think I agree, not E, because round here, tan is huge. And if it's huge, it's not going to be smaller than these things. It's going to be an absolutely massive number. Um, cool. People are trying to multiple choice it again. Okay, okay. Right, let's turn on a poll and see what happens. Secret poll this time. Okay. Um, yeah, tan is a uh, sine of a cosine, says someone in chat, um, which is y over x here. Okay. Um, I found this question quite tricky to think about, to break down which, um, which regions we wanted to talk about. Um, I found it really helpful to think about different regions at different different times. Um, okay. Yeah. So, for example, you might want to think about um, is sine x bigger than cosine x? What range of x is that true for? So I would draw a diagram like sine. Oh, that's not my best picture of sine and cosine. What do I want? What do I want? There we go. Down here and then up. Oh. That was embarrassingly slow. Cosine, okay. Hmm. So when is sine bigger than cosine? Well, sine is bigger than cosine in this range. I think that's 45 degrees. I think that's 225 degrees. See, I know some values of sine and cosine, right? They're both root two over two, and they're both minus root two over two. Okay. Um, so I definitely only, I'm only interested in this bit here, 45 to 225. So on the on the circle graph, that's somewhere like 45 degrees, and over here is like 225 degrees. So I'm only interested in B, C, and D out of the out of the possibilities. I'm only interested in that bit of the graph because elsewhere, yeah, cos and sine doing other stuff. Um, um, meanwhile, what have we got? So we've got this other inequality, tan less than cosine. And people in chat are talking about whether tan and cosine are positive or negative, uh, which is a really good idea. Um, for example, in here, tan is massive over here. I think tan is huge. Uh, have I got a bit confused? I might have got a bit confused. Um, tan is huge around here, isn't it? It gets bigger than one. It's bigger than one and goes up to goes up to infinitely large values um, over here. So this seems pretty bad. Tan's not going to be smaller than cosine around here. Um, but then just here, tan is very negative. Oh, hello. Thank you, Mary. Um, tan very negative. Um, so when tan becomes very negative, this seems true. Uh, tan is going to be less than cosine. So this seems like happy times. Both inequalities are true. But I'm leaning on C, because just as we start the range of C, tan's very negative. I guess it goes wrong at some point because tan increases and it's going to hit. It's going to hit cosine at some point around here. Um, I'm not really sure where that happens, but sure, happens at some point. Um, tan's going to it's going to go wrong again. Tan's just so fast, changes its value so fast. But I think my I think my answer is going to be C. Uh, try x and y both being positive. Does chat agree with me? Are we going to see what's going on? Oh, chat really agrees with me. Thank you, chat. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> like 93%. Perfect. Good. Good place to pause for a bit. I think we'll have a look at the long question. Um, and then I want to switch to the just chatting bit to address some of those questions that I didn't answer before. Um, here's a long question. Let's spend about five minutes on this. I'm going to overrun a little bit. Uh, I'm going to ignore the first part of this question, which talks about sketching graph. And the last bit's kind of algebra. But there's an interesting step in the middle. So I'm going to zoom in on that one. Um, theta is some angle between 0 and 90 for this. Um, we've got a semicircle. And these points are minus cosine theta and sine theta on here. Um, so um, this there's some region A here, and we're just asked to find the area of A. Um, okay, so we're going to need to know how to find this bit of area. And it's a complicated shape. It's made of straight line, straight line, straight line, a random bit of circle. And I'm told where everything is, so you know I, I could draw a diagram to scale if I wanted to. Um, for a particular value of theta, if, if I, you know, I don't know theta. If I knew theta, I could just draw this and measure it. Um, but I've got to do this in terms of theta. Um, so, I guess the only bit of trigonometry really in this question, out of all of the stuff we're asked to do, um, is to 
have some sort of idea about how to split up this area to use some facts that we know. I don't know a formula for area that's line, 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 bit of a circle. What am I going to do? Um, uh, let's have suggestions. Oh, people in chat want to integrate it. My word, good luck to you. Okay, so if you know lots of integration, then you can you can try and you can try and integrate this using complicated integration facts. Um, that's integration beyond the beyond the scope of maths, but if you know it, then you can go for it. Have a go. Um, the mark scheme for this question explicitly gives marks. We saw it coming. It gives marks for people who want to do integration. Um, but there's other methods. So George, I think, was first across the line to mark in some radii, and Rilo is here as well, and Zach um, to split it up into triangles. An anonymous person's here as well. Um, the radius is one. Yes, somebody wants to assume that. Ah, oh, here come the suggestions. Brilliant. Yep, sine squared plus cos squared is one. Yes, Ollie. Um, which is really good, actually. That turns out to be really helpful in a moment. Um, let's draw in these radii. If we draw in these radii, this seems like a good idea because we know lots of lengths. When you know lots of lengths, trigonometry is easier. Um, here, we know the, the length of these perfectly straight lines. Um, they're both length one. And we know this side length here is sine theta. So we know loads of facts about this triangle. Um, feels a bit silly to label it sine theta here. But that's like the length of sine theta. Um, in fact, that means that this angle up here is theta. Um, because opposite over hypotenuse is sine theta. A little bit tri triangly. Yeah, Rilo says can't, can't draw it in chat, which is an annoying feature of chat that you can't submit drawings. Um, okay. Uh, join the edges up. Yeah, join the edges. Here we go. Here we go. And, okay, so that's theta. This is a little bit like a backwards trigonometry fact in a way. Um, I know that this length is sine theta, so the angle must be theta. Normally you do that the other way around, right? You're given the angle theta and you write down sine theta. Here, it's spot the triangle, but the other way around. So if you're told the side length. Let's play the game again over here. Um, here we've got a triangle, it's got one on the hypotenuse. It's got a side length of cosine theta over here. I know this triangle. It's the one with an angle of theta here. Um, so having seen this triangle with cosine theta like that, um, that means that if you know the angle, you can write down the side length. But also, if you know the side length, you can write down the angle. Um, brilliant stuff. Okay. Um, brilliantly, this then turns out to be a right angle. So if you chase some angles around, this is 90 degrees minus theta. So this is a right angle. So that splits the area of A into a quarter of a circle plus two triangles. And we know everything about these triangles. Like I was saying before, once you know some facts about a triangle, you know everything. You know its area, you know what's going on with it, you know the side lengths and the angles. Um, so now we've got a, a way in to find the area A, um, which I, I quite like as a bit of trigonometry in the middle of this question. Um, the rest of the question is not very trigonometr trigonometrical, but if you want to have a go at it, then it is 2013 question four, and it's on screen now. Cool, right, okay. Um, that's the time that I said. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hang around and chat to people a little bit. Um, I feel like there's more to say about stuff we've been talking about, and people were asking questions before that I'm gonna try and catch up on. Um, if you want to go now, then nice to see you. Uh, we'll be live again next week for some geometry. So similar ideas. I think we're gonna talk about how to find the area of a quarter of a circle. So if that's a sort of mystery for you, then join us again next week to find out how big a quarter of a circle is. It's a quarter of the air. Anyway, um, join us next week. Um, but if you're hanging around, then hi. Um, yeah, cool. Do people want to talk about the rest of this? What do, what do you want to talk about? There were some questions before about emissions, which I might do. Um, people seem to want to talk about this a little bit. I'm going to do that. Uh, I was going to recommend solving these long questions for CS and philosophy applicants. Something I was going to say. OK, let's address that. Catch up with chat. Uh, Rilo's got an area for the an area for the triangle because these triangles are actually congruent. You do not have to spot that they're congruent, um, but they both have the same side lengths. They're congruent triangles, cosine sine theta. They have the same area, which is one half of cosine theta times sine theta. You could even stick them together to make a little rectangle with side lengths cosine theta and sine theta if you really wanted to. Um, we did not have an ad break today. I found it quite hard to get everything into one hour, probably because I answer too many questions all the way through. Um, okay. Ooh. 
for part one on this question, Will's asked about this question, which I've got on screen, so might as well talk about it. Um, do you need to know, do we need to know the gradient at minus a zero is zero a positive when drawing it? Um, that can be found in the quotient rule, but it's not expected knowledge on the syllabus. Yeah, okay, so Will's kind of answered the question as well. It's not on the syllabus, so you're not expected to be able to do the quotient rule. Um, for a sketch, I wouldn't work out the derivative of points unless I was told to or asked to work it out. Um, for this function, if you haven't seen the quotient rule, then it's basically impossible to work out what the gradient is. Um, you know that the function's increasing, I think. I guess you're right that it, it could have zero derivative there. Um, there's this question about whether it looks like this with a flat bit here or whether it looks like this with not flat. Those are very similar. So when you sketch it for your marks, you can get away with making it look like both and it doesn't really matter for the question. Uh, it's not important and working it out would be tricky. So, yeah. Good good question and answer included. Um, do I think the math scores are going to be higher this year uh, because of grade inflation? <laughs> um, so Matt, Matt doesn't have grade inflation in the same way as A-levels. Uh, the math, math scores have been staying around 50 on average uh, for a while, so we don't need to do a different thing with our math scores. Um, grade inflation doesn't affect Oxford that much because all the people we make offers to get A star in maths anyway, if that makes sense. So everyone else getting A star as well, exaggeration, but if everyone gets A star, that's kind of doesn't affect the Oxford applicants that much because they were going to get A star anyway. Um, Tommy's off. Bye, Tommy. And uh, Nikita's gone. <laughs> Bye, Nikita. <laughs> um, so the formula in the extension be, oh, no, I've got I's in the wrong place. <gasps> Is there a typo in the extension? It might be a typo. Yes, it's supposed to be that. What did I actually put? A quick look. Oh, I don't want to look. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've got the sign in case I'm the wrong way around. That'll be fixed at some point. <laughs> Uh, don't don't look directly at don't look directly at the typos and we're good. Molly's off. Bye, Molly. Um, what percentage of applicants do we interview? About thirty percent for mathematics. Um, at the moment, we've got about ten applicants per place, and we shortlist down to about three per place. So that's about thirty percent. Um, uh, Emily asks, does the math curriculum cover all of the A level maths curriculum? No, it's just the first half plus a little bit, sequences and series added on as well. So not quite all of it. Um, I think someone's put, no, someone's just put the word no. Um, someone might link to the MAT syllabus as well, which is on the MAT page, so you can have a look at it. We're gonna cover it over 10 live streams. We're gonna cover all of the MAT syllabus. Um, it's not even all of A-level maths. Uh, yep, two triangles, we're still doing the middle question. Uh, pi over four plus sine x cos x. Yeah, cool, x and theta. Uh, part three of this question, I can't remember how many marks this is. I think the breakdown might be about three or four in each part. So yeah, if you can do part three quickly, then that's easy way to get uh, easy way to get quick marks, I guess. Cool. Um, resources for the CS questions. So for CS questions, I think experience of doing tricky questions is more helpful even than it is for the rest of the mat. That skill's already helpful for the rest of the mat, but. Experience of trying tricky questions is really helpful for CS questions. Um, they've got some recommendations on their website of other places where you can find tricky questions. Um, ah, that displayed that over there, did it? Right, okay. Um, let me try and find their resources. Uh, so, I'm going to the computer science website. Let's go on the web internet, what could possibly go wrong? Um, on the computer science website, somewhere on here, I think we can find resources for pre preparing for the maths admissions test. Let's go in here. How to apply sounds good. Ah, I want to find out about the maths admissions test. Okay, facts about admissions. Oh, how to prepare. And then in here, ah, recursion. We've got Matt live stream with Dr. James Monroe. You're watching that now. Okay, right. Um, self referential aside, um, they recommend things like uh, Bebras um, for use for questions five to seven. So other, other sources of questions um, that you can find out about. I think you can download some questions in here for just other sorts of questions for practicing doing tricky questions. Right, cool. I genuinely did not know that they'd added this to that list. Right, cool. Uh, we do an ad break now. Uh, thank you, and all the moderators. Moderator is also me. There are some asymptotes going on. Yeah, asymptotes in that. I'm a bit behind with chat, sorry. Oh, I'm really behind with chat. Right, let's catch this up. 
Uh, there is a vertical asymptote in the first part. We're doing question four. It's going really well. There's a vertical asymptote. Function gets really big over here. It's true. Uh, whichever version of the picture you draw. My pictures are very similar. When x is equal to a, it gets really big. Um, do you need them for lengths of... Uh, do you need radians for lengths of arcs of circles? Technically, no. Um, so if you're asked about a circle where this is 100 degrees and the radius is 2, then you can work out this arc length without using any radians. You say something like, well, 120 degrees is one third of a circle, so this is one third of 2 pi r, where r is 2. So you can work out some arc lengths just by using facts about proportion of a circle rather than using any radians. Uh, do I think you're going to have to sit exams? <laughs> have to sit. Have to sit exams next year. Uh, yes, I think that's going to happen. I'm just optimistic like that. Or pessimistic, depending on the tone of the question. Right. Are interviews going to be in person? Interviews this year, 2021. Interviews are all going to be online. Um, so we're going to do them all virtually again. Um, we did online interviews last year. We're doing online interviews again this year. Um, that's fine. It turns out we can do the same sort of interviews where we ask maths questions as normal. Uh, what kind of math score do you want? Is it time to look at the histograms? Should we look at the histograms? They're sometimes handy, right? Uh, I'm a little bit behind with chat, but... I'm going to show you the, show you the map page, just because I like showing people the map page. Here's the map page. Uh, this is my map page. It's got a coffee cup at the top. Um, and, oh, it's got a link to the live stream <laughs> again. Um, and then way down here, it's got a list of past papers and facts about past papers. So past admissions rounds, I suppose. Uh, what did people score on average? Out of the people we shortlisted, what did they score? And out of the people we made offers to, after we'd seen their interviews as well, um, what, what were the scores there? So for example, last year, people scored about 57.9. And a good score was about 75.2 because that's the average of people we shortlisted. Okay, excuse me. Right, good, okay. Uh, yeah, there's a question about state schools and private schools. I saw a state school question earlier. Um, so we do look at school type. We know that it's more subtle than just school type. We look at school statistics where we've got them. Uh, for example, we look at your GCSE scores contextualized by um, the overall performance of your school. Just It's just a little bit of context there. Um, context is important. Um, it's just a, uh, we look at that a little bit. Um, but we don't have we don't have sort of bonus points or penalty points for school type because the reality is a lot more subtle than that. Um, right, cool. Uh, people are answering a question from ages ago. Sorry, uh, I'm so behind with chat. Uh, chat's lagging. Let's just call it lag. Let's call it lag rather than bad moderation. Oh, 23, right, cool. Um, <laughs> Emmanuel wants to know if they can mention OOMC as part of a physics personal statement. I don't see why not. You're learning. You learn about maths and problem solving a little bit. There's some good discussions of advanced mathematics. Did we have some physics in there? There was a little bit of dynamics in one of them. Maths Club, 26 live streams still uh, available to watch back on the Maths Club website, uh, which should be easy to find if you search for something like Oxford Online Maths Club, which is what we were doing this year. Did we plan on making the? Uh, yeah. So did we plan on making tests hard, or do they just turn out hard? It just happens. Uh, sometimes the questions are slightly harder than we meant them to be, or people just really dislike a question. Sometimes people really like a question. Um, I wrote a short question once where I thought 80% of people were going to get the question right. In fact, about 30% of people got the question right. So that's 50% difference, which is like half the people. Oh, well. There's the syllabus. Thank you, Nikita, who I think was leaving. So that's very... I've been so slightly on chat. Right, cool. Uh, resources for CS specific questions I've now done. Um, why do some applicants, yeah, we highlighted this one before. Why do some applicants uh, get rejected? Sometimes because we, you know, they got, had a good math score, but um, as well as the math score, we also invited them to interview. Sometimes um, it, the interview doesn't go so well, and then we think think about making the making the offers to somebody else instead. Um, Matt's not the only thing we've got. Also got the rest of their UCAS applic application. I'm not allowed to comment on individual applications. Please do not lie on your UCAS application. Right. Uh, Will would like to know the average. That is on the famed Matt website, which we've now seen. I'm so far behind. Uh, Matt syllabus. 
goodbye to someone anonymous, bye. Um, sometimes maths comes up that's not on the syllabus. Um, how do you prepare for this? Hopefully there's an explanation of the new maths in the question. Um, if a question introduces new maths, um, then I'm supposed to explain it. The question about binary last year did have a quick explanation of what binary was. Um, and I think there was only one or two marks for doing anything with binary. Um, so there was a small bit of, here's what binary is, write this number in binary. And there were, I think two marks for doing that. And then I think you could do the rest of the question without doing any binary at all. Uh, Matt's score. If I, if I get 90 on the mat, do I need to do an interview? Yes. <laughs> Who is Grant Sanderson? Yeah, I know. Who's Grant Sanderson? I like this. Uh, hot take. Okay, good. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, on the website, it says that getting an interview depends on a weighted combination of mat score and A star at GCC. Can I say more about this? Oh, that question's gone. Okay. Uh, yeah, shut off. Portion. When when are interviews? Interviews are in early December. I'm so behind with chat. Uh, interviews for international students are online. In fact, all of our interviews are online this year. Um, so same as everyone else, we do them online um, over something like Zoom or Teams or some video call. Um, is the paper going to be easy or tough this year? I can't tell you. Um, yeah, if I get 80 or more, some applicants. Uh, GCSE is overlooked if I get do it a bit if I get a better math score. I think that's a good summary. Um, we look at GCSEs and math score together. Math score is more important than GCSEs. It works out as, the formula is very complicated for combining together information that we've got, but it works out as maths more important than GCSEs. In terms of, we did some statistics about predicting interview score, doing a kind of linear regression um, on GCSE data and math scores did some linear regression and it just turned out that Matt's more important. GCSEs tell you a little bit, Matt tells you quite a lot. That makes sense to me because Matt is closer to the interviews in time and in content because it's maths and your GCSEs were longer ago and didn't involve just maths, other stuff as well. And we know that for this cohort, your GCSEs were uh, probably cancelled and you got centre assessed grades instead. So probably even, even less relevant. Um, uh, if you were diagnosed with a disability, oh, see, it's this little anonymous question that makes me glad we've got anonymous questions. Um, if you were diagnosed with a disability after you received your offer, would it be considered? Um, yeah, so we've got a really good disability advisory service to, to help work with students on course with disabilities. Um, we want the best out of people. We want people to thrive on course. So we make reasonable adjustments to things and we work with students to work out uh, how we can support them best. Um, when you're applying on UCAS, you're encouraged to disclose disabilities so that we can help make modifications during the admissions process if we need to. If you need extra time on the mat, then you can get extra time on the mat. Um, you're encouraged to disclose things so that we can uh, we can uh, make it make allowances for you. Um, if you disclose things afterwards, then you'll be working with the universities that have made you offers, working with them to say, this is now something about me. Can you help me work out how studying is going to work? Um, so. Yeah, it would be considered and taken very seriously, and we're going to work with you. Right, cool. Uh, everyone wants to use OMC in their personal statements, which is great. Um, the thinking part of math questions is very tricky. That is that is the idea. Um, the maths is supposed to be very limited. Thinking part very tricky. Um, sometimes it takes a long time to find patterns and answers. Yeah, no, that's 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 supposed to be the way it works for everyone. Um, so these questions are going to be tough to guess something. Um, one of the skills is to make a plan or change your plan if something's not working, to change to a different different strategy. Um, here, if you started off doing some crazy integral, oh, hello, started off doing some crazy integral um, and you were doing pages and pages of integral, um, at some point you might think, ah, this is far too much work, can I just draw some lines in and see what happens? And if you draw some lines in, like, oh, right, it's just a quarter of a circle plus some triangles, much easier. Being able to switch plans is good because you might save yourself lots of time. Okay. Um, extracurriculars unrelated to your subject. Um, if you're applying to blah, um, Oxford doesn't consider extracurricular stuff not related to your subject. So if you if you talk about um, sports and other stuff that you do that's not related to the course, you're allowed to do that, but we're not going to consider it for admissions purposes. Um, we're just looking for people who'd be really good 
at studying the academic stuff on our course. Um, regardless of whether you're the head girl or whether you were on a boat team at some, or something, we're just looking for people who would be academically good. Um, okay. Uh, gap year. Yes, no, riser. I flagged it and then I didn't get back to it. Um, let's go. Uh, and Maya really wants to know about that weighted combination. Um, engineering course and applying for computer science. Does that make me different from other applicants? Well, yes, a bit, because most applicants are applying straight from school, but it's it's okay. If you're doing stuff to keep your skills sharp, then you can make a competitive application because you're keeping your skills sharp and you're going to be ready to demonstrate that you'd be good on the course. Um, you're allowed to apply. You can make a competitive application, even if you're not coming straight from school. Who is Nikita Mazepin? Is he famous? Who is Grant Sanderson? Is he fa Why are people picking these usernames? What's going on? Um, Nikita Mazepin is a Formula One driver. Um... Right, okay. Uh, Maya, so the combination, yeah, okay. You asked a couple of times, and I sort of try to answer it. Um, it's not 50-50. It weighs, leans more heavily on that. Right, cool. Uh, other physics courses? Um, you recommend a further chance? Other physics courses? Uh, not really. I don't really recommend any of the third party, pay lots of money to do a course. Uh, there's loads of really good free resources. Um, I really like the STEP support program, which is free and it's just a bunch of resources. Um, the structure of these sessions is heavily inspired by step support program stuff. Um, if you get a really good uh, math score, but do badly in the interview, will you still get an interview offer? Um, no, probably not. Um, sorry, we're, we're shortlisting about three people per place. That means we can't make offers to all the people we interview. Um, if your interviews, if, if an interview, other people are doing more math problems than you or solving more math problems, just, better at mathematics, then it's, it's likely we're going to make offers to the other people instead. Not for certain, there might be something else going on, there might be an interesting um, reason to make you an offer, but in general, we're asking you math questions at interview for a reason. We want to see you do, do some maths. Can we put unique on our personal statement? Yes, you can. Um, I don't know about other unis. Um, I hope they understand that seeing loads of stuff over the summer to try some extra problems and think about things is good hope that other universities like that too. Um, you can also disclose it in activities in preparation for higher education. It's a weird section of the UCAS form for you. Um, activities in preparation for higher education has unique in the drop down menu, so you can choose unique. Good luck finding that bit of the UCAS form. Right. Uh, can't take maths because of problems. Um, ugh, okay. Um, There are some test centres around where candidates absolutely can't take them out because there are no test centres and nobody can register as a test centre, then we would perhaps have to consider an application without the mat. Um, it's not too late to register as a test centre. If a school or college can register you to take the mat, then they can set that up from scratch to run the mat um, with you. Um, I like the fact, see, Rilo likes it, I like the fact it's more reliant on the thinking part, so that's good. Um, anonymous, if you're in the middle of a disability diagnosis, can you mention this on UCAS? Should you mention this on UCAS? Um, I think you can dis disclose this on UCAS. I think so. Um, I have that in the good to know category. It would be good to know, right? Um, I can't remember how the UCAS form works. I can't remember if it asks for diagnose, diagnosed disabilities or not. Probably doesn't. I don't know offhand, sorry. I think you can. You can definitely put it in a personal statement or a teacher's reference. Or contact universities. If the form is very particular, then you can contact universities separately to say, look, here's something that's going on, just to let you know. And that'll probably be really nice to help you out. Um, okay. Is rough work marked for the long questions? Uh, yes. Um, for the long questions, we look at your working out. Um, Maya, your question disappeared and it's back. Yeah, there we go. Um, can you recommend any textbooks so I could see I would enjoy the abstract and proof-based maths at university? Not sure I would like it. All of our lecture notes are online. Um, all of the lecture notes for the Oxford courses are just on the web. Um, if you go to courses, courses.maths.ox.ac.uk, um, there's a link in our prospectus, if you can find the prospectus um, in there as well, um, to find out uh, more about what we teach. Um, and the Oxford Online Maths Club that we ran for the first half of the year has also got some examples of proof-based mathematics. Um, I particularly liked uh, proving Wilson's theorem. Wilson's theorem or Wilson's lemma? 
proving Wilson's theorem uh, on one of their maths club uh, episodes. Uh, can I mention I got gold in the SMC in year 12? Go for it. Tell us what you got out of doing it as well. If you particularly liked one of the questions, then tell us about that. Or tell us about how um, you... you know, don't just list don't just list stuff I think make it personal um, lots of people do the SMC so mentioning the SMC is something you can mention but uh, telling us what you got out of it or how it helped prepare you for university maths ooh somebody's replied if they've been nice okay good right uh, if you do maths and fill you're in lectures to ETC this is important this is about joint honours courses um, you're in maths lectures with the rest of the mathematicians. You go to normal maths lectures with the mathematicians, like literally the same lecture, you get set to the same problems and you go to the same exam at the end. Um, you're doing literal, not not different, but you're doing the same maths course. Um, you do some of, it, some of the maths course. Um, separately, you have some philosophy content together with other people who are learning about philosophy. Maybe they're doing physics and philosophy. Maybe they're doing politics, philosophy and economics. But you have some ph philosophy content with the rest of them. Uh, and you're putting those two things together. Um, so the joint knowledge connoisseur is a really exciting way to combine some of the math scores with something else. Uh, working out marks are important when you're asked to do things like show that. Um, so over here, show that this. Um, your working out there is kind of the proof or the demonstration of why it's true. That's important. Uh, 50 to 70 on the maths, but do really well in the interview. Hey, if you got shortlisted for interview, Yes, you can still get a place. Um, cool. Uh, can we practice? Is there a set of problems? We're going to talk about interview problems uh, in about 10 weeks on this show. Um, one of the future episodes is about interview questions. They're a lot like maths questions. We ask maths questions at interview. Um, can you put stuff on your personal statement that you did with other unis? Oh, it's the opposite of the previous question. Do other unis like unique? Do we like other stuff? Yeah, tell us about other stuff. That's fine. You don't have to do stuff with Oxford. Um, do stuff with other people as well. Cool. Right, good. They're doing loads of fun things too. Uh, bye, Anke. Right, okay. Uh, which you said about 10 minutes ago, so sorry. Uh, let's talk about S-step to Mua. Look at all these acronyms. AMSP. Yeah, go go for it. Tell us about it. Sounds good. Tell us about what you've got out of doing things as well. Um, uh, if you're one year older, do people expect you to do better? I suppose yes a little bit. If you've, if you've got more mathematical experience or more mathematical maturity from finishing your qualifications then yeah I think it's reasonable to say we we'll expect you to show that through your math score um, so prob probably yes but we're going to look at your application to decide to decide that we don't have penalty points or bonus marks so good right um, Rilo says that they get more nervous on camera yeah me too so interviews are going to be very nervous right with if you're nervous and I'm nervous as well um, um, people are normally a bit nervous in interviews. We normally try and um, calm people down by asking the maths questions. I've tried other strategies of calming people down, but um, I think uh, just doing maths, starting the maths question, describing some maths, and saying, oh, look, trying to help make sure someone's uh, following along as I show them. Perhaps I'm showing them a new bit of maths and checking the following along. Just having that, that conversation is how I normally get started with interviews. Uh, do we have a quantitative way of how good interviews were in the uh, in the interview? Yeah, we give people scores. We give them numbers. I, I, it's a very mathematician thing to do, isn't it? To say this really human experience. You know, we did some maths. You had some ideas. We wrote things down. We communicated, and then I, I assign you a number, which is very mathematician of me. Um, but yeah, we, we we give numbers so that we can quickly compare. But we also look at some. We write some comments, and we 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 remember the experience as well. Um, good. Grant always gets the top comment because it's a sort of running joke, I think. Um, would I recommend this book that I haven't read? I haven't read it. Uh, you find out your math score at the end of the process in January when you get an email from me with your math score. Uh, how did you take part in OOMC? Uh, there's a link that's going to be typed in chat. I'm going to get there first. Aha, I'm typing it now. Uh, the math, math like the OOMC was just uh, a, a weekly live stream that people joined in with. Have further reading as well afterwards. Um, right, cool. Uh, are there other universities doing stuff? I'm just expected to know stuff, and I really don't. Are the universities? So you might 
I don't know, you might be aware of other universities doing open days or other universities promoting mathematics or organising events. I know that Imperial College London are doing some stuff. I think it's based in London or it might be online. It's quite hard to keep up with everything that other universities are doing. Um, I don't think I did anything like this when I was applying to university, partly because there wasn't a maths live stream when I was applying to university, um, but partly because if I'm allowed to for Rilo, I just wasn't really, I just wasn't really looking for it. So if you're here now in August looking for maths to do on the internet, then hi. Right, uh, open applications, somebody wants to ask about, uh, and it's the question, do you have a better chance of getting into an Oxford? Uh, no. Um, so when you make an open application, let's catch up everyone. Is anyone still here? I sort of wander a little bit sometimes. Um, when you make an open application, um, you get allocated to a college straight away. It's the first thing that happens to your application is you get assigned to one of the colleges. Um, and then after that, you're treated exactly as if you applied to that college. So you can make an open application. You're saying, you're saying I don't mind which college I've applied to. Um, a computer assigns you to a college and then you're treated exactly as if you applied to that college. So it's not an advantage or a disadvantage. It's just something you can do if you don't care which college. Um, what sort of extracurricular content? I use the phrase supercurricular content to mean um, extra bits of mathematics. Um, extra maths, we like to see that you're trying out other bits of stuff outside the classroom, that you're finding out about other bits of mathematics in your spare time. Um, uh, I like it when people uh, I, I like it when people are really keen on some bit of maths and they want to try and explain why they're interested in it. Um, I've seen people talk about how uh, they, they spot it and they're really proud of spotting that in mechanics there's this thing called centre of math, centre of mass, and in statistics there's this thing called expectation, and they've got the same formula because they're secretly the same thing. Uh, uh, applicant wrote a couple of sentences about how much they liked that, um, which just seemed quite nice that you know, people are finding out about maths or thinking about thinking about links between things um, uh, you don't have to have an original observation I mean that's um, something that's been said before I guess you don't have to create mathematics or have original original ideas here but um, experiencing other stuff outside of the learning stuff for an exam um, one of the aims of the maths club was to show people supercurricular maths just show people extra stuff just throw it out onto the internet and see if anybody would watch it. Uh, and loads of you did, so thank you. Um, Matt score does matter after interview as well. That's a sentence I'm going to say. We, we look back at your UCAS form, application, everything we know about you and your Matt score when we make the final decisions. Uh, do you get multiple interviews for joint honours? Yes, usually you would get joint, multiple interviews for, if you apply for maths and philosophy B, um, you usually have some maths interviews and some philosophy interviews. What happens if one subject really like you and the interview for the other one doesn't? Um, it's possible, so if the mathematicians really like you, but the philosophers not so sure, um, it's possible that you could get an offer to say, you can study with us um, on the maths course if you like. So we, we, we might make you an offer for just maths. Um, that way around. Uh, that can happen, it's quite rare. Um, usually the interviewing teams agree a bit more or both of them will say, ah, you know, you know what, they know lots of maths, they're interested in philosophy, we'll see how it works out on the course, let's let them study maths and philosophy. Um, that's more normal to be honest. Right, uh, okay. Yeah. Are some colleges harder to get into is a question I like because the main bit of my job when I'm not doing this, the main bit of my job is to make sure that the answer to this question is no. Um, I do lots of stuff during the admissions process. Um, I'm not based in any of the colleges. I work between all of the colleges to make sure that we're being fair between all the colleges and comparing applicants between different colleges. Um, so big part of my job when I'm not doing this is to make sure that the answer to that question is no. Uh, did they get in? Oh gosh, did the person with the averages Centre of Mass person. I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I looked at their personal statement before interviewing them, and I can't remember. If you're out there, person who talked about averages on their personal statements, let me know how it went, because I've forgotten, sorry. I've forgotten who you are. Um, okay. We're still going. We're still here. Uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, let's see. Um, personal statements talk about specific examples of books read. 
and other ways of demonstrating enthusiasm replace this? Yeah, I, I'd say other ways of enth- other ways of other ways of demonstrating enthusiasm could replace books. Um, books books are tricky because most books are written for a general audience, and you know way more maths than a general audience. So demonstrating enthusiasm by trying out bits of mathematics in some other way uh, might be might actually be an easier way to demonstrate that you're keen on learning about mathematics. Um, Ah, Rosie's doing a step course with Cambridge. Hooray! Other things exist. Um, is that useful? I, th- I think that's very useful for solving maths problems and preparing for university as well, right? Um, so preparing for university by thinking about maths problems with Cambridge. Sounds great. Uh, getting into Oxford sounds hard. It's very popular. Lots of people apply. There's, I, I have lots to say, right? People ask me lots of questions. I answer lots of things. Overall, we're looking for people who will do well on our course. That's it. We've got all these extra steps like asking them maths questions on the maths, doing interviews to ask them more maths questions. We're just looking for people who have the potential to succeed on our course, which is a maths course. So checking that they're good at maths and good at learning things and want to learn more mathematics with us. Um, That's kind of it. Um, The process is really complicated and confusing, mostly because we have so many applicants per place. So... Sorry that it sounds really hard and complicated. Um, if you're really keen on mathematics, then you can make a very competitive application. If you're, if you're good at solving math problems and you want to do lots of math problems. Right, okay. Uh, do we ask about things on the personal statement at interview? Um, I personally don't. Um, some of my colleagues might. Um, so maybe a little bit. Um, some people think that it helps you feel comfortable if we talk about something on your personal statement. Um, to have a chat with you briefly at the start. Um, I always want to just ask maths questions, so I, I don't ask about people's personal statements. I've got the personal statement, so I can read it. I can read it before and afterwards. I don't need to spend time talking to you about it. I like talking about maths questions. Uh, okay. I feel like the maths is gonna be really hard, but luckily it's months away, ages. It's like, oh, uh, two, uh, th- almost a bit less than three months away, ages away. And it doesn't use very many different maths topics, so, you know. Uh, problem together isn't on the curriculum at all. How can you articulate this in a personal statement? I would describe the problem, to be honest. I'll talk about the problem a little bit. I know you don't have very many characters, um, but just briefly try and say what the problem's about um, and what sort of things you're doing to think about it. I don't know. Sounds like a good idea. Sounds nice. Um, I'm working on a problem to do with triangles, and we're trying to use complex numbers for it. And I'm enjoying thinking about complex numbers and triangles. I don't know. Maybe not those nouns, but other nouns. Uh, Rosie's step course. Uh, computer science and philosophy. Including philosophy. I think they expect you to have an interest in philosophy if you're applying for computer science and philosophy. Um, maths and philosophy question. You'll be probably have a philosophy interview. Well, I'll talk about philosophy. If you're applying for a course then they expect you to be interested in that course. Uh, if colleges don't matter, why does the Norrington table exist? Um, people are going to make the Norrington table whether it matters or not. <laughs> Norrington table is just made afterwards, right? Um, uh, I guess different... Yeah. It doesn't matter in terms of admissions for whether you get admitted or not. Um which college you apply to doesn't affect your chances of being made an offer for maths. Um, okay, good. Uh, important work experience. Uh, work experience is not important for personal statements for Oxford. Um, we don't expect you to have any work experience. Um, and yeah, we know that there's been a pandemic and it's been really hard to get any work experience. But that's okay, because we weren't expecting people to have work experience anyway. I'm not even really sure what maths work experience would be. Um, good, okay. I already have some exams and scores. If I get an offer, will it be conditional or unconditional? If you've already met the standard conditional offer, then it's probably not conditional on doing anything else. Yeah. Un- unconditional offer tends to mean something different, so I don't like that phrase. But, yeah. Okay. Good. Right. Okay. Uh, step course. Uh, it's an anonymous person. Yep. Cool. Uh, step step course is great. I always endorse the step course. It's just fantastic. It's a really good thing. Um, personal statements. How do you do the step course? I think they're asking about the... I think it might be the step support course, step support program, or something else. Step support program is linked on the MAT website. Because uh, it's great. Ooh, 
maximizing angles. Yeah, solid 3D, 3D angles. Oh, 3D angles are really tricky. Good, right? Uh, or they're not sort of related to angles. We were talking about angles. Ah, maybe not. Um, ooh, I wrote a program using algorithms I found interesting from further maths decision. I found a practical use for it. Can I talk about this? I love it when people people write a sort of half a paragraph of personal statement and then say, is this my personal statement? I mean, it's personal and it's a statement. So yeah, it looks good. No, joking aside. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. Um, remember that you're trying to demonstrate that you be a good student. You're interested in the course. You're enthusiastic about the subject matter and you're willing to work hard and you know, you're know you thinking about stuff outside the classroom. So interested in the subject that just the classroom, not interesting enough. Got to find other bits of algorithms using other bits that I wasn't learning in my further maths decision to just put things together. I think you can demonstrate those skills. Right. But remember, you're demonstrating skills, you're not just listing stuff that you've done, like, oh, it's a big list of stuff. Um, you're demonstrating skills that you would have in the course. I'm doing a lot of thumbs ups today. Um, I'm not sure I like it. Um, differences with interviews. We generally do our interviews in just about the same way online. We're going to ask maths questions. Um, we're going to use uh, things like Teams or uh, Zoom to call people, but otherwise we found that we could just do pretty much the same interviews, asking math questions and talking to people. Um, we've been trying to use these online whiteboards for some of the interviews um, so that we can write together and see what you're writing. Um, if that doesn't work, then we can fall back to showing bits of paper to a camera, which is, it turns out, just as good. Um, okay, what do we look for in a CS applicant? Um, good at maths, good at solving problems, interested in computer science, usually got some experience of getting computers to solve problems. Um, that all overlaps quite a lot. So we're looking for people who'd be good at our computer science course where they've got to solve lots of problems and have an interest in computers. Uh, algorithms is the overlap, isn't it? People interested in uh, writing algorithms to solve problems. Uh, yeah, what is this problem? Sounds good. Uh, cool. Uh, are there courses at Oxford to prepare for university or for the mat test? Uh, so a course we're looking for a course. Okay, let's let's try and piece this together. We're looking for a course by Oxford to prepare for the mat test. Uh, this is it. Sorry, <laughs> this is the Oxford organised preparing for the mat test course. It's not in person. It's online. Sorry, I've just seen it says in person in the question. But you know, this is what we're doing. Um, hi. Uh, what colleges do I interview for? Hmm, good question. Uh, I did mat tutoring. Uh, applying to do the mat tutoring. I don't know what that means. Um, if you've got skills, if you if it demonstrates your skills, go for it. Uh, in person, what is the watch I'm wearing? I'm wearing a Fitbit. Um, it's one of those. It counts steps. I, it's not sponsored. Not not an advert. Um, uh, da, da, da. How important would GCSEs be? I think not very important. Just my opinion there. Uh, do you have guys like applicants that have tutored other children and does the age of them matter? So teaching can be a good way to learn mathematics, to reinforce the mathematics that you know. Um, do we like it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I, I think you can talk about that as a skill as well, to say, um, yeah, reinforcing learning and looking at things. I feel like I'm helping with a lot of personal statements today. Uh, oh, here's a personal statement question. Good supercurricular activities, just anything to do with thinking about mathematics or finding out more about mathematics. Anything like that, I think. Uh, Math 2021 reveal, question mark. Uh, <laughs> references from teachers, somebody's mentioned as well. So references from teachers are very useful. They might have important information about the context around your application. They usually say, and this person's great at maths, which is nice. Um, so we do look at the references from your from your teachers. Um, usually they all say, this person's amazingly good at mathematics, hooray. Um, but there's also some important contextual information in there sometimes. Uh, which college is the best for maths? Take best to mean whatever makes the most sense. Um, they're all the best. The metric is, I guess, um, no, I don't even know. Um, Yeah, they they all have access to exactly the same maths degree is the problem here, but they do they do the same maths degree like literally the the students all go from their colleges to the same lectures and learn the same mathematics, which is sort of the only thing I care about. 
Uh, 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 seven is required from high level maths. Yes, seven is required for high level A level maths for eight IB. We're wrapping up a little bit, I think. Um, middle of a standard A level four, 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 middle of a one year course, my local university. Yeah. Two one from first semester. Can I get in for CS? So, fact, you will need to be applying. You are applying to start the course from first year because we don't do transfer onto the CS course or the maths course. Um, don't have the standard A level, so you'd be trying. I think you'd be trying to demonstrate that your local university was sufficient preparation for the computer science course. If it's got a really strong mathematical component, if you're doing lots of maths that's equivalent to A-level maths and further maths sort of stuff, if you're doing lots of maths, then you could maybe make that argument to say that you were preparing for the computer science course. Um, you're midway through first year, and it's a year and a bit before the start of the course, so you'd be midway through second, second year by the time we get around to the start of the course. So thinking about the maths that you're learning over the next year, are you going to be prepared for the computer science course? Um, it's not impossible. Um, but it might be the case that you need to do some other preparation to just get ready for what's on what's on that course. Like how all the other applicants might be in school learning things like math and further math to get ready um, for studying at university. Um, if your course is related, then yeah. Uh, what's your favourite area of math? You can't say all of it. I like fluid dynamics. So I suppose differential equations. Um, I like using differential equations to explain um, things about the real world. Uh, I really like maths where your answers can be visualised. I like um, drawing diagrams and thinking about things quite visually. Um, and fluid dynamics lets me do that uh, because I'm solving for sort of motion of some some fluid, uh, working out where things are going, and I can draw pictures of how how things are moving around. Which I I guess I like having the pictures. Um, are there any courses in person? Yeah, we did this one. Uh, teaches maths and history. He can tell us. The kind of secret is that you can put whatever you like in your personal statement. You can write any characters you want to. Um, and should I mention my tutor maths or mention the other subjects too? If you're short on characters, right? So if you're short on characters, then the maths bit is probably the most relevant bit. Um, if you're trying to make a point, if you're making a point about your general teaching skills or how that's showing your like patience and willing to work hard, then it doesn't matter. Um, so that's tricky, right? It depends depends what point you're making, because you're not just listing stuff you've done. If you're making some general point about, you know, uh, very academic and interested, I'm so great at lots of general subjects that I'm teaching these people, I don't know what point you're making. Um, uh, if you just want to talk about extra maths that you're doing, then I guess the maths tutoring is the most relevant bit. But the other stuff could be interesting too. I'm not saying I'm not saying don't don't say stuff. I, I know there's a character limit, so at some point people have to stop writing stuff. Uh, are the Oxford courses in person? We're teaching in person where possible. Um, what does that mean? Good question. Um, I think tutorials are mostly in person next year. The lectures are, some of the lectures are in person and where the lectures are online we're doing some in person things around around the course to augment it. I guess blended. What's your second favourite maths topic? <laughs> this is fun isn't it? Um, uh, I think it's going to be vector calculus. Um, so differential equations, vector calculus. It's like calculus, but with vectors. And you can do lots of different sorts of calculus once you're in the world of vectors. What's my opinion on Worcester College? Uh, I like Worcester College. I looked around Worcester College uh, one time. More than one time. Oh, yeah, I've been one time. More than one time. Uh, it's a very pretty college. Uh, good. What do I know about the Reach Oxford Scholarship? Not a lot. Um, I know that the Reach Oxford Scholarship is assessed based on academic merit and it's done after we've made offers. Um, so it's a scholarship that after we've decided who to take on the course, um, people can apply for the Reach Oxford Scholarship afterwards. Um, so in general, we do the application bit, making our offers in January, um, without looking at people's finances and then from there once we made the offers try and find out if we can help people with the finances um, from there can you link match projects in the personal name that's a good question um, I think your links won't actually be links um, but I've seen it done before that people put URL, URLs in um, it's not 
I think it's not encouraged. Uh, you definitely shouldn't say... You definitely shouldn't say, for a full version of my personal statement, click here, and then you've got to read ten pages. Oh, no, over there. I think that's not really allowed. Um, I know that teachers... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I think I'm going to be harsh. Character limit, probably you can't link to other stuff. But probably nobody's going to ban you putting a URL in. Who are like, I like YouTube. Link. What happens? Why are scholarships so hard? Uh, because lots of people want the scholarships and there are not as many scholarships as people. So then it's competitive. Um, sorry. Uh, were you considering other jobs before you went into academia? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, do my, let's do my advice, life advice at some point. I've always thought that I wanted to uh, do something useful with mathematics in the real world, some sort of when I was a kid, I wanted to be a chemical engineer for a bit, um, which I haven't done, and I, I'm sort of losing time before to qualify as a chemical engineer. It's probably not going to happen. Um, over the years, I've thought about using maths to apply to uh, some sort of consultancy in that sort of sector to do something uh, something based around consultancy work. Seems fun. You get to consult on lots of different problems. It's a bit like problem solving, right? Seems like a fun idea. Uh, but instead, here I am in a little square on YouTube telling people about triangles, which is fun, so that's all right. Okay, uh, what is this job? <laughs> We've paused the comment. There we go. Will's backed me up. Will says this is useful. Thanks, Will. Uh... <laughs> uh, Rilo's almost proved the Collatz conjecture, which is nice. Um, what kind of academics? Um, we look back at your application and your UCAS form. We look at we look at that. We do look at math and interview performance when we're deciding scholarships. Um, I'm not in charge of deciding who gets the scholarships, so I can't really say more than that. Um, they ask the team that's in charge of that ask me for math scores and interview scores. So they're interested in that, I suppose. Uh, if I'm in a news article that's related to my subject, could I give instructions on how to Google it online? I would not do that. Why would I not do that? I think that uses too many characters. And I think it's unlikely that the person reading your personal statement, they might have printed it out. It's kind of unlikely that they're going to go and do it. So in some sense, you could just say, I'm, in a, <laughs> I'm mentioned in an article. But by the way, what what skill are you demonstrating by being in a news article? If the, if the news article is talking about a skill that you've got, just tell us about the skill. You don't have to. Don't have to tell us that you're somebody else has reported on. Somebody else has reported on your talent. That's all right. It's like a, it's like an endorsement of your skills. But you can just tell us about your skills. Um, what's the topmost priority? Find people who are good at solving maths problems. Find people who want to solve maths problems with us for three or four years, uh, and make them offers. That's the top priority. Uh, if I don't have so yeah, competition experience. Don't need any competition experience varies a lot how much people are exposed to whether people have got those opportunities um if you've got the chance to do it you might find it fun but it's also uh yeah you might find it really fun competitions can be a great way to do an extra bit of mathematics but if you don't have them then i wouldn't stress about it are reapplicants frowned upon would it be harder for a reapplicant to get an offer so reapplicants have failed to get a place and then are applying again and the applic second application is treated completely separately from their first application. So we don't compare back to their previous grades. We don't look back at their previous application or math scores. They're not linked in our database. We don't get those numbers. Um, but it's the same person. Um, so if we interview them again, then it might go in a similar way to the previous interview. Um, it's What I'm saying, I suppose, is that it's... It's tricky for reapplicants to get a place because it's tricky for anyone to get a place. Um, which is really oversubscribed. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap up in a minute. Uh, I might take some off offline, but we're going for almost two hours now. So it feels like it's probably time to wrap up the live stream. Uh, are math papers getting harder? Last year, the average score was really high. Who knows? On questions like that, I think I might wrap up. My personal statement, all the A-levels I do... You list your A-levels separately, so this is fine. 
uh, you don't have to talk about all of your A-levels. I think it's the, the moment to wrap up. You do not have to talk about all of your A-levels. We get a list of your A-levels separately. You fill that in separately. Also, your teacher's reference, uh, UCAS reference, is probably going to talk about your subjects. Cool. Um, right. Uh, I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, thank you for watching Oxford Matt's live stream. I forgot the name of the thing there. Um, and we'll be back next week for geometry problems. Bye.